Everyone. Welcome to the latest midweek message from St. John's Church in Weymouth. As always, so glad that you're able to join us wherever you're joining us from. And great to know as well this week that there are people watching from as far away as Australia. And so if you're watching this week, you're really welcome from down under as well. These messages are just a little way of keeping in touch and encouraging you a little bit through this strange time that we continue to go through. We're looking at 1 Peter, the letter that was written by Peter to the early church, written to a group of people going through a really hard time, Christians who were scattered around the Roman Empire, all facing persecution of different levels. A very different kind of hard time to the one that we're going through. But nonetheless, there are things we can learn from what Peter said back then to those people. We can apply those things to our situation today. The other day, it was a privilege, yesterday in fact, to go to St. John's Primary School, which is just around the corner from the church. We have a great friendship with the school and have done for many, many years. And to go and be part of the Year 6 Leavers Service, usually that's a service that would take place here in church. And we, we were pretty gutted, really, that it couldn't happen this year, but that's just the way it is. So <clears throat> I went and on behalf of the church here, uh, gave out a Bible to each of those children who are leaving, leaving primary school moving on to secondary school. It's a tradition that now stretches back, we think, 51 years, where the church has blessed each of those young people with the gift of a Bible. Thank you to you if you're part of the church and gave generously to enable, to do, for, enable us to do that again this year. At St. John's School, we know that each of those young people have had several years worth of really good teaching on what it is to be a Christian, on Christian values. They've been instilled and embedded into their learning. They've heard the gospel many, many times. They've visited church many, many times. They've heard all about Jesus and they've met people who follow Jesus. And it's our prayer for them that their Bibles will help them to remember all of those things that they've learned over the last few years. And memories are powerful and memories are perhaps at their most powerful when we're going through difficult times. Some of those young people will be in for a difficult time as they go through the teenage years and start secondary school and think about future life choices and all of those kind of things. And we hope that the memory of what they've learnt about Jesus will sustain them. Not that it will only be a memory, but we want them to have a living, active faith. But we hope that they'll be sustained as well by those memories of learning who God is and learning who they are and that God is with them and God loves them. And so we are going through a hard time. The people Peter was writing to we're going through a hard time. And I guess we could summarize what he said so far by saying that he's calling them to remember in the midst of their difficulty, in the midst of their pressure that they are experiencing, to remember who God is, to remember what he's done for them, to remember who they are in Christ, to remember what they are called for, to remember the hope that they have of salvation and that God is with them at all times. And so they're called in that tough moment to remember, to recall. It's actually what scripture says repeatedly, all the way through particularly the Psalms. God's people are called to remember what God has done in the past so that it will inform our faith for the future. And so here's something that Peter says in chapter three, verse 15. In your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that you have. Do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience. Seems like Peter is encouraging those people to go back to that original question of why they follow Jesus, why they love Jesus, why they believe what they believe. There are many starting points for journeys of faith. I wonder what yours was. What was it that first got you interested or, or hooked you in? Was it a crisis moment in your life? Maybe it was a sudden appreciation of creation and nature. Maybe it was asking a whole series of searching questions. Maybe you experienced some form of healing or a miracle. Maybe you were persuaded by reading God's word of the truth of who Jesus is. Maybe there have been searching questions bubbling up within you. There's always a way in. There's always a starting point for our faith, for our journey of faith. And actually, once we arrive at that place, we find so many more reasons to follow God and to believe in Jesus. Well, what Peter's saying here is, don't just remember those things, but be ready to talk about them. Be ready to explain to people with gentleness and respect 
why you believe what you believe. Maybe lockdown is bringing some opportunities for you to share your faith in new ways with people who have not previously shown an interest. Well, with gentleness, with respect, mindful of having a clear conscience so that we don't appear hypocritical, we have opportunities to give a reason for the hope that we have. And the reason isn't because we're brilliant. It's not because we have amazing buildings like this. It's not because of um, the financial rewards of being a Christian or because we get immunity from things as we've talked about many, many times. In fact, this is all written to people who are suffering, yet God can use that suffering. But the reason is that we are loved by God. And it's an active love whereby God has come to us in Jesus Christ to show us how to live, to enable us to be close to him. His death on the cross reconciled, brought together a broken world, fallen and in sin with a holy, loving God. Peace established, peace between us and God and peace that we're called to between each other. And there's a salvation that we enjoy now and also look forward to. There are so many blessings God brings into our lives. If you're watching this thinking, I'd love to know more, drop me a line, go on the church Facebook page, the, the church website, get in touch. I'll, I'll tell you more about the reasons for the hope I have in Christ and there'll be tons of people around you who would do the same. So don't be afraid to get in touch if you're thinking I'd love to know more about that. But if you already do know uh, Jesus, if you're already following him, revisit the reasons why. Re read afresh in God's word who he is. Allow yourself to be captivated once again by Jesus and all he said and all he did and all he does. Reawaken your relationship with God today, your openness to the Holy Spirit. Remind yourselves of who God is, who you are, what God has done for you that we might just all be alive with God, alive and full of the Holy Spirit. And so when people ask us those questions, why do you believe what you believe? They're not awkward, they're not difficult, they just flow out from us in the way you might talk about other areas of your life that you really love. They might just be a natural overflow of who we are, that we share generously and respectfully and courteously what we believe and why we believe it. So go back, go back to the start. Where did the journey start for you? Maybe it's worth just going back in your mind's eye and in prayer to that place, thanking God again, asking him to maybe bring back some of those memories and then added to those memories all the many reasons that you now know that God is good and want to follow him. And there's so much more we can discover as well. So in these tough times, let's let our memories of who God is sustain us. But let's not just have memories. Let's have a living active faith. Talk to God today. Bring all those things to him and see what this next week might look like if you're ready and prepared to share your faith generously with other people. Between now and then, have a good few days. We look forward to next time. Take care and God bless.